The following podcast may not be for all listeners. Listener discretion is advised. If you don't know the movie Friday the 13th by now, you probably should just go climb back under the rock you've been living under. But if you do remember, then you know the franchise is comprised of 12 slasher films. And in time, it spawned a TV series, novels, comic books, clothing, and video games. The story focuses on the character Jason Voorhees, a boy who drowned at the Camp Crystal Lake completely due to the staff's negligence. The lake is then rumored to be cursed, and Jason returns every summer to exact his revenge. It's a great series, one of my favorites. But one fan took this movie very seriously. This is the true story of Mark Branch, a young man who was obsessed with the movie Friday the 13th. In the heart of Greenfield, Massachusetts, an ordinary grocery store harbored an extraordinary secret. Behind the counter, ringing up bread and milk with a chillingly normal facade was Mark Branch. To the unsuspecting eye, he was just another 19-year-old lost in the sea of 1980s teenagers. Yet lurking beneath the veneer of his mundane job and relatable age, Mark was a terrifying enigma. A boy who embodied the furthest possible thing from normal. He would often rent VHS horror movies, at first gravitating to simple horror movies. The gorier the better. But as time passed, his tastes shifted. He no longer craved jump scares or an eerie atmosphere. All that mattered was the unflinching depiction of gore. Throughout his teen years, he had terrified many female students. In some cases, writing obscene notes to them or even pulling a knife on one of them. His obsession with horror films increased And at one point, he was completely obsessed with Jason Voorhees of the Friday the 13th movie chain. Sooner than later, he would make his horror movie obsession a reality. Friends would often speak their concerns as Mark was completely engrossed in horror. Mark would often say he wondered what it would be like to kill someone. There isn't much information about his victim, 18-year-old Sharon Gregory. However, it is said that she was attending Greenfield College during this time. For some reason, Sharon had begun writing an evaluation of Mark Branch and his extreme obsession with horror movies. The paper created a full-on psychological profile of Mark Branch. Mark was quite upset by this. On October 24th, 1988, Mark Branch entered Sharon Gregory's home in the early morning hours. Fully dressed as Jason Voorhees, including the mask, he chased her to the upstairs bathroom. This is where Mark Branch brutally stabbed Sharon Gregory to death. Sharon had severe injuries to her head, chest, and abdomen. Sharon's body was found some time later, mutilated in the bathtub of her home by her twin sister, Cheryl. The crime shocked the town. Halloween was canceled. Residents were hunkered down in fear. Within days, tips came in and led authorities directly to Mark Branch. They found a shrine of gory horror and Jason Voorhees in his apartment. Not long after this, another tip is received. The location of Mark's car, 13 miles outside of Greenfield. 
When authorities arrived at the vehicle, all they found was blood on the front seat and console, but Mark Branch was nowhere to be found. Authorities used the services of a psychic profiler, John Monty, to assist them in locating Mark Branch. The psychic, John, would view a photo of Sharon and hear the name Jason repeatedly. Authorities did not tell him of Mark's obsession with the character Jason. John Monte was able to lead authorities to an old abandoned slaughterhouse Authorities find drawings of stick figures on the walls, a male stick figure with a knife, chasing a female stick figure up some stairs. While it seems Mark may have drawn these stick figures, he was not there. Halloween descended upon the town and miraculously the night passed without further bloodshed, but the relief was short-lived. John Monty is a psychic with an uncanny reputation for delivering chilling messages. And this time, his message was, Mark is still out there, lurking in the shadows of the forest. He felt strongly that Mark had hung himself from a pine tree. He described Mark as wearing blue jeans and combat boots. One month after Sharon's death, November 29th, a hunter finds Mark's body hanging from a pine tree. He was hanging by his bootlaces and belt. According to the coroner, Mark had hung himself almost immediately after the murder. Mark Branch's descent into darkness was swift and merciless, leaving a trail of bloodshed that would haunt the town for generations to come. Could his obsession with the movie Friday the 13th have caused this? Or perhaps there was already some type of mental illness? The specifics of his crime will forever remain the stuff of nightmares, but one thing is certain, Mark Branch was no ordinary killer. He unleashed a terror beyond our understanding. The only possibility remaining is that true monsters aren't creatures of legend, but flesh and blood beings walking our streets, sitting in our homes. What a terrifying thought. Monsters aren't the stuff of nightmares, but our neighbors, our friends, and even our family the case of Mark Branch serves as a grim reminder that sometimes the most unsettling terrors are those that defy explanation and force us to stand watch, ever vigilant. On days like Friday the 13th, one can never be quite sure what lurks in the shadows waiting to emerge. <laughs>